today's project, we're going to go from a book to a vase. Guys, welcome back to the studio. I'm Mr. G, your virtual online professor for art and art things. Today's project that we're going to go over is the book vase project. Now, up front, this is not my project. I uh, was strolling through Instagram. There's a guy who's teaching at the Singapore school, the American Singapore school in Singapore, names Mr. P. Uh, you can hit him up in Instagram at Mr. P Ceramics. I'm putting a link in, in the description box for him uh, to go to his IG page. This dude is bananas. He is way super awesome in the stuff that he makes. Love just seeing his stuff come through my feed. The, the projects that the guy comes up with and does, I'm like, dude, this, I, I gotta make, can I, can I make a video on this? Because I love this project. This is great. He told me, he's like, yeah, go for it. Make this project. Now we'll say this, this project that I'm doing today, I saw about a year ago and he's like, can you please just wait a year? Uh, because he wanted to have his kids, uh, he wanted to have his students have enough time to make some of these pieces. So I'm like, yeah, it's cool. So video time for me now. The video today's project is the book vase. Now for this project, I'm gonna throw up some of the pictures of his own students work. Their stuff is just exquisitely wonderful. Uh, you can definitely tell that they're using uh, good quality glazes to finish these pieces off. But the design overall is a very simple style where I would be teaching this to my ceramic one class um, because most of the slab design slab building projects uh, I try and do those with my uh, intro classes because cutting out slabs and adding slabs together I think is a very it's a good beginner level project but at the same time it gives you a lot of substance to where you can uh, apply that more that methodology more in the upper levels and getting it under the belt early on is a good thing let's get into the build of this project now again this is uh, this is for my summer ceramic series and and I'm doing this because I'm a big fan of the great pottery throwdown and I want to incorporate those kind of projects into you guys' repertoire and get something under your belt during those summer months so that we can encourage you guys to make awesome fun projects and just dive into this stuff now. All right, so for this project, first off, we're doing a vase design. Now, when I'm teaching vase designs to my students, I pull out the classic Greek vase templates and I put up a design on the board to have them either trace it or free draw it or use something out of a book that we have. I've got spares around the room that I've used in the past, such as these. Uh, I've taken boxes, the box that the clay comes in, we just cut off sections of them to make small templates for the students to come up with their vase designs. Now, if you guys are making these templates yourself, let's go over the little basics of that. Starting off with a nice vertical length of cardboard. I do, I do want a long piece. Now, this is the height of your vase. Using a stretch of cardboard, it's about seven inches in length, about the size of my hand here. Using this piece of cardboard, you're gonna take a line and you're gonna take that line from one end of the cardboard to the opposite end of the cardboard. So that you are taking that line and just creating a simple road line, but that's gonna create your vase shape. So for this, when we cut this piece out, we're gonna have our positive our positive vase on this side, we have our negative vase symbol on this side, so that when we cut these apart, uh, you'll have those two structures. Now, if you wanna flip them around and use the vase that you prefer to choose, that's fine. You guys can pick how this is done, but this is just your template guide. And I think doing this is a good thing, especially for um, getting you guys prepped in your sketchbooks, sketch design, coming up with that line of how to look at a silhouette form, how to look at the shape of the object that you guys are working on. Now, taking that silhouette design, we're gonna then lay out a couple slabs of clay. After I've got my slabs rolled out, taking that va that template design that I've got, I'm going to then start tracing that onto the clay. Now for this, you want at least eight pieces. Uh, that's gonna make up your overall book vase, it, it, the, the body, the shape of the vase itself. I do recommend that whatever you do, make sure that you're dealing in even the numbers and no less than six would be my rule of thumb. And I really don't think you should do more than 12 just because it'll get really tight inside of there. So you wanna be able to have enough room to uh, put all your pieces in together without having to deal with things shifting on you. Now, once I've gotten all my pieces cut out, using the sponge to smooth out all the sections, I wanna smooth out all my sides, make sure I got every kind of burr, uh, the sides of anything that's left behind from the, the slab roller so that everything is, there's no marring, there's everything is smooth, nice, clean cut. Adding those pieces together. Now for this, this is where I really deviated from Mr. P's design, and that is I did not create a center post. I'm actually using the 
slabs themselves to weigh against each other on my design uh and the reason i'm doing this is simply because i'm lazy uh i would highly recommend doing a the tube design doing a tube structure in the middle of it so if you want to use a coiling technique to build a really fine tube to go up in the center you could do that i tried rolling out a slab and the, the clay that i was using and this is kind of what i've noticed that a lot of my clay is because of being out of school for several years and that clay getting old getting stagnant it just never incorporated again back to the way it was prior that bag of clay that i was using i didn't have another bag already to go so i just went sideways with it and said look it'll still work technically it does work would i do it for my students would i tell you guys to do it not really uh and and i like having these mistakes in these videos because it makes me reaffirm of why we have to do certain things you need to have that center post not only to hold everything up structurally but it also provides a nice center piece to where as you're pushing in those uh the the pieces of clay the walls of the vase it has something to attach to a lot easier than two pieces of the wall connecting together like i said it works but it's just not as efficient as using that tube cylinder in the, in the center a center post for that vase now, as I'm adding these pieces together in there, I am putting in loads of slip. I wanna make sure that I cake the slip in there. And what I'm doing is uh, the slip that I'm making, I've actually taken scraps of clay, uh, I have my mask on, and I'm rolling it out to pulverize it down to a fine dust. Um, and the reason that I'm doing that is so that it, when I'm adding water to it again, I can get that smooth, uh, almost a casting slip kind of quality to it. I want that really nice, smooth slip that I can put on with a paintbrush and then and then scrape away extra that I need to but it puts on at such a better quality when you pulverize that clip that slip down to that dust quality if you guys are doing this do it outside if you possibly can I had a mask on if you're doing it inside no everybody has to wear a mask the dust that you're getting off of pulverizing that clay out is harmful uh it's the easiest way to say it so don't do that without a mask uh again safety always at the, at the forefront once i've gotten those pieces together i've added those slips slip together then it's really just other design elements that i want to add into this so what i did was i noticed that at the top i want to have more structure coming off of that top surface so it took a ring um, i have a few car gears that i keep in the back that i use to create circles with for this one i think i use buckets i'm shooting the audio of this like a couple weeks after I built the piece. Uh, when, when you guys are making these pieces yourselves, make sure that you have uh, some sort of game plan of what you want to do for add-on elements that you want to add to the other pieces. Uh, one of the, th the throwdown challenges in the Great Pottery Throwdown that I'm hoping to get to this at some point was the roses challenge where they're, they're taking thin pieces of clay, rolling them out to create ceramic roses, ceramic figurines. For this book piece, that was my goal. I wanted to have uh, add-on small figuring small elements that I've created out of uh, thin pieces of clay rolling them up creating little flowers and whatnot to add on further decoration onto the book vase which I that is one thing that for the project I will be adding into but for right now I don't have it so maybe another video definitely think a part two is coming once you had all added all those pieces in make sure that everything is slipped up properly and that you've had chances to chase everything back down with a wet sponge and that is to make sure that everything is smooth polished off and finished let's go ahead to the example so this example that I was working on uh, up until yesterday it was wrapped in plastic and still semi leather hard uh one night out bone dry this thing is going into recycle uh and as soon as i'm done with this video because i want you guys to see it so you can see all the different components of the vase so we have the nice walls of the vase everything's laid out on on next to each other but you can definitely tell that there's no center post holding those pieces together and that makes this very um heavy in general but it's more heavy to me than usual just because of the amount of weight that's being pushed down to this one center space uh i did a little coin on the bottom so that i have a nice base element and then out for that top half again doing several different iterations different tiers of adding little fine fine little blocks of clay and then putting the rings over there to have kind of like a 
uh, birdbath dish at the top. So finishing off of your piece, make sure that you add enough decorations to where it's not just flat on the top that you've added stuff in there. Uh, when you're glazing, cascading those glazes around, that makes this have another function, which is if you cake on glazes on here and it has a chance to run, it will have a chance to set at that base element, but if you want to expand it a little more, maybe put a little lip that comes up to where it almost makes a well at the bottom. That would be another suggestion I'd have for you guys. Again, smooth these things out, chase it back with a sponge and everything should come out really cool. And that's where we're gonna wrap up class today. All right, guys, I hope that you got something excellent out of today's class. I'm going to keep up this summer ceramic series. I love doing these pieces for you guys. I think this is a lot of fun for me. I get to work in clay again, but it's uh, just also nice to have you guys thinking about 3D clay play more often because it's, uh, it's clay's just awesome clay's awesome um again thank you for coming back to the studio let's go ahead and wrap up with our homework as we always do don't forget to like subscribe share on all the various platforms get the message out there to as many teachers friends students that we possibly can educate the masses that is always my goal uh don't forget that if you guys had a question comment or concern during today's video today raise your hands in the comments below happy to answer those questions from my classmates as always i will see you guys next class so until then later guys